Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus Raw, August, holy moly, August, August 3rd, 2020. Um, I am reminded, after watching this Raw, of when I used to write for different wrestling internet sites. I wrote for a bunch of them, but most notably Lethal Wrestling. And at Lethal Wrestling, we had a forum board, um, not unlike what you would have at Reddit and things like that. And that's really where a lot of the action happened. The posts happened on the front page, but a lot of people um, just came to the forums that didn't even read the front page because it was a lot of fun. The writers and the guy who ran the joint would yeah, interact with everybody. We, had a, we just had a great time. And there was one particular poster I remember um, whose, whose tag name was Peter Porker. And he was, to put it mildly, a WCW apologist. And right up until the end, and even after they closed, this guy would just vehemently defend everything WCW and then after they closed would go on and on about how if only this had happened or this had happened or if they had allowed Kevin Sullivan to take over everything they would be destroying the WWF slash E as God intended and all this kind of stuff and at first we thought it was just a gimmick but then you realize no this guy really vehemently because I would write him directly at times just to get a gauge of him and no he would just defend beyond all reason why was I reminded of him because when I look at that raw and then I look at people's reaction to that raw all I could think of was Peter Porker it was by all accounts an absolutely terrible, terrible Raw. But merely introducing new things or doing anything will immediately elicit a number of people who will Peter Porker that show, who will immediately go to, well, we've been saying do something new and they did something new with the Raw Underground Fight Club thing. So for that alone, you got to give it a pass or, oh, you know, they're, they're pushing new stars. And even though it appears like it's going nowhere, you just have to go, oh, they had those guys who were, I guess, supposed to be like Antifa or something like firebombing the one thing and the microphones cut out and it was very edgy and we've been asking him to do something different so I, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt okay should you give things the benefit of the doubt I suppose and uh, it's nice to be optimistic I suppose however this is terrible um, if the rumors are true and the stories are true about you know writers will pitch 30 to 40 ideas and they'll all get shot down before and things are being rewritten at the last minute and it's chaos and turmoil it's certainly easy to see it manifest um, I will say my disclaimer at the top kudos to the performers who are asking to put this schlock over it's like watching at times uh, Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks and Morgan Freeman and Denzel Washington and Angela Bassett and um, any number of fine actors and Ed Harris and things like that trying to do a rendition of Troll 2 and make it work as a movie. So Raw opens up pretty standard video package stuff. We've got our announced crew. The uh, trainees are there cheering on in the crowd. We open with a match right away, which is really great to see. Uh, MVP against Apollo Crews. So this thing is going to play out some more. Um, I would predict at the top of my notes here that this is just going to lead to more stuff 
happening at SummerSlam, even though it kind of feels like they should end this. Um, Apollo Crews, they have a back and forth match. Apollo Crews does win. Um, Lashley attacks him, goes for the full Nelson, but Crews gets away. All right. After a little bit of back and forth, I'm glad they're having Shelton Benjamin contribute more in the sense that it doesn't seem like he's just a guy who stands there while MVB talks for him, but he's a, a member of the group that states his opinions and things like that. MVP now says he wants his rematch at SummerSlam. The Hurt Business walks off. So uh, we see Sasha and Bailey getting ready in the back. Um, a quick note about that. I saw the thing that Ember Moon posted about how Sasha and Bailey have uh, kind of they have all the titles and there's other people they could put the titles on and all this stuff. Um, I'm reminded of how often people misdirect their anger. Um, you can't get mad at Sasha and Bailey at this point. They're doing good stuff. Um, they're given very little to work with in many ways. And they're making it go. Um, you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at the fact that they can't find something on a wider scope to do with the women, even though they're doing more than holding up their end on both shows, all three shows, really, but especially on Raw. Uh, I get Ember Moon's frustration. I'm glad she feels comfortable venting. In fact, boy, you're really getting the sense that that things are barely being held together at WWE in many ways. So, you know, they're being interviewed um, now, Sasha and Bailey. They're asked if um, they're going to defend anything. They mock and insult, and they're really working this annoying gimmick thing. And um, they go to Asuka yelling, screaming. They're mad at Asuka for interrupting. Um, Shayla, Shayna Baszler interrupts. That's interesting. Um, so are we not doing anything with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax anymore? I, this, this show just a whole bunch of things felt very disconnected to things that they had established before. Again, sort of giving a real slipshod feel. It's one thing to try new things. It's another thing to where the whole thing feels like it's created out of whole cloth. And then next week, it feels like they're going to reinvent the wheel all over again. And it's a wheel um, with four corners. <laughs> so the Iconics, um, they're there with Kevin Owens. They asked to be a guest on his show. He says uh, he's not interested. He's already got a guest. Ah, I wonder who that is. Couldn't be Ruby Riot, could it? Uh, we got the KO show after the break. And, uh, yep, it's Ruby Riot. Dun, 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 dun. Um, Liv Morgan's out there. They're doing their thing. I, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm just not into it. It's, it's This stuff's bad. And, then, and Owens is having mic troubles. I immediately note... Uh-oh, this is this is a thing. It's clearly not he's legitimately having mic troubles, that it's part of a thing. I will say to a casual viewer, it just looks like the show's falling apart. <laughs> and I don't know how beneficial that is. All right. So then the Iconics come out as the Riot Squad, two out of three of them anyway, sort of reform. Um... The Riot Squad gets into it with the Iconics. Long story short, we go to commercial. So Shane McMahon is there. Um, got this big guard. And I, I sort of look at that guard and I go like, oh, wasn't he the big one of the ninjas in that initial thing of... This show is so fucking terrible, man. It's just so bad. So Shane's there. He's got an announcement. Okay. Iconics against the Riot Squad. So now we're going right into this match. Okay. Um, we got a roll-up out of nowhere, which, again, I just hate it. And the Riot Squad wins. Liv Morgan has now stopped her losing streak. And 
Ruby Riot has gotten more revenge. What happened to the... Okay. So the Iconics double team live. Riot runs in. And then Liv and Riot hit a move, and then they leave. What? Okay. Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton are going to meet face-to-face. -face. God, I hope that's good. I imagine that will be good. That may be the only thing that's really good. Um, Tom, I believe, tells us there's been some kind of accident backstage. He sends us to Charlie. There's a bunch of production boxes and equipment fell over. The lights glitching and all this other stuff that's been going on, it all ties together. MVP walks up and says he's not happy with the unsafe working conditions. Um, Apollo Crews has accepted his United States title rematch at SummerSlam. Shelton Benjamin walks up and says someone has stolen his 24-7 title. They walk off. Um, Drew McIntyre comes out. He uh, got hit by the uh, RKO last week, of course. He takes the mic and cuts a really good promo about Orton. Though it's one of these, like, semi-kayfabe breaking ones. Orton hasn't made anybody is the gist of it. And, um... This is a common thing in WWE. You've been spoon-fed everything, and I've had to work for it. This is the only moral distinction that they tend to make. The problem is everybody cuts this kind of promo, right? This this charge was levied at Drew McIntyre by Dolph Ziggler. You've been handed this, or you haven't really done a whole lot compared to me. Um, the morality of the WWE is incredibly slipshod, and it comes down to... You're a good person if you had to work for something. You're a bad person if things tended to get handed to you. You're a good person if you've accomplished a lot, but a bad person if you haven't. And often those things are at odds against each other. It's very strange. Orton comes. Um, his response is pretty good. Um, Drew's promo is better, and it probably should be better. Drew, again, talks about how his life was falling apart, but now it's better. I, it's a good promo, but again... Mm, it just feels very much the same. Very much the same. Got Nia Jax and uh, Pat Buck backstage talking, um, who Nia Jax assaulted. Go to commercial. Kevin Owens is with the Riot Squad in the back. Um, Flair walks up, talks to Owens. The long and short of it is Owens wants to face Orton next week. So we get something set up. Nia Jax is out there. She's supposed to apologize to Pat Buck, but she kind of refuses to do it. Um, she basically tries to goad Buck into a fight. She gives him the microphone. He says that she's indefinitely suspended without pay. She gets mad. She drops him. People boo. That's it. Are we building to Nia Jax against Buck? I, I don't know. What about Baszler? I don't know. Oh, man. This show's so awful. And again, anyone who wants to Peter Porker this thing, this show is awful. It's really, really bad. It feels very disjointed. Um, Our Truth, he's got the 24 7 title. It's supposed to be Shelton Benjamin's. Um, he's being chased by Benjamin and the uh, ninjas of Akira Tozawa. Triple Threat, Our Truth. Tazawa and Benjamin. I write down Tazawa is probably going to win because that makes no sense. And guess what happens? Tazawa wins because it makes no sense. Funny. Shelton regroups. So Shelton doesn't have his 24 7 title. Um, MVP has been pinned by Apollo Crews, but yet is going to get a match at SummerSlam. And Lashley wasn't even able to get a hold of uh, Cruz and put him in his full Nelson. 
So I predict that the Hurt Business, who has had a completely terrible night, will somehow dominate during the show. Because that's how these shows are written. It's Everything's 50-50 and nothing makes sense and nothing is put over huge. It's exhausting. Dominic's there. Oh, we cut to Shane McMahon first, though. There's a ring with no ropes. We used to do this thing called the Kumite match in PCW on rare occasion. Um, fun fact, uh, Tacoma was undefeated in Kumite matches. So maybe I should send him there. He's, of course, very happily married and he's got kids and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to do it, but so it goes. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take a very important call. Cool things are happening, by the way. Um, that's a, just a side note. Not a lot of people listen to these raw things, but those that do listen, um, just know, like, cool stuff is happening. It's very awesome. Um, so we got Sasha Banks against Shayna Baszler. A match I would personally be really excited to see, except I just know it's it's not going to result in anything, and sure enough, it does not. Asuka appears, Bailey gets in a fight with her, on and on. Um, no contest. Uh, Banks gets out of there, Asuka hits the ring. Um, uh, what? Such nonsense. Um, we go to break. We come back from the break. We see how Bailey attacked Curry Sane. What a terrible way to go out for her. Uh, Asuka's there. Baszler approaches Asuka. Uh, that's interesting. She wants Asuka to win the title back. So then she can beat up Asuka. What? Banks and Bailey comes out. Why would they come out when they... Oh, none of this makes sense. Banks brags, um, and she's she's gonna give Asuka a SummerSlam title shot if she can defeat Bailey. She doesn't put her against Shayna Baszler, which makes sense. She says if you can beat Bailey, Bailey is not happy, but it is what it is. That's the long and short of this whole thing. What? Uh, Angel Garza, this stuff is horrible with the girl from The Bachelor. Oh man. It's just so bad. We go to Raw Underground. I don't... Big Dude beats up a couple guys next. I mean, it was great to see Chico Adams and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but... Man. Um, we get Garza against Dawkins. Again, they're just... Everything seems to run backwards. How many times are they going to have the Street Profits beat them in different forms? But they, yay, Garza wins. Okay, that sort of made sense. Nice. Andrade against Montez. No contest. Because Ford keeps collapsing. Because he's maybe poisoned or something? What the hell is this show? What is this show? My kids are laughing because I just, they, they think it's funny how exasperated I am. So Shane McMahon's there with three dancers, and Eric of the Viking Raiders beats people up, and then Ford collapsed a couple times, and he was poisoned. What? Um, Hurt Business is backstage. They're mad, but they're going to Raw Underground. What did I say? I said that they, like, totally jobbed out on the show tonight, losing titles and losing matches and everything else, but that they would get something because that's how they book nowadays and so i guess they're going to go to raw underground and beat everybody up that's the upshot of this whole thing holy balls so next week now they're trying to pretend that they care about what happens next week excellent so we got kevin owens against randy orton foregone conclusion match awesome uh bailey versus oscar with oscar getting a title shot from sasha banks at summer slams if summer slam if she wins what does um, Kerry Sane get for beating Bailey in a non-title match? Nothing. Okay. Uh, Seth Rollins and Mysterio. So now we're going back to this stuff. What? Um, Rollins goes after Tom. Samoa Joe stands up to him. What is happening? 
Dominic comes, does a bunch of stuff to Rollins. Uh, Dominic against Seth Rollins for SummerSlam. He says, yeah. What is happening? So we go to Raw Underground. Dolph Ziggler. He wrestled at Kent State. Okay. Um, Ziggler taps out his opponent. Hurt Business arrives. A bunch of beatdowns happen. That's the end. This show was shit. God. If you want to Peter Porker this nonsense, feel free. Um, but to me, it is whistling by the graveyard. <laughs> 